family. How are we on this beautiful day? Amen. Amen. I was asked this morning when I came in if I was uh, sharing the scripture reading this morning uh, in prayer. My answer was no, I'm not. I'm just the mouthpiece. God's going to share it. Amen. Right through me. I'm going to read out of Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. It says, may, God of, may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant, brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him. Family, it's about him. It's not about us. It's not our strength. It's his strength that, that he does all things through us. Amen? Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen? Have you ever messed up so badly that it left you believing God wants nothing to do with you? If your answer is yes, then you're in good company. Because we all have. We've all made poor choices and bad decisions. A bad decision could cost you your marriage, your job, your friendship, or even your peace of mind. But if you're willing to admit you've messed up, you're perfect for an encounter with Jesus. In fact, he loves ministering to the people that mess up. One of the many things I love about Jesus is that he gravitates toward those who are truly ignored, ridiculed, hated, or rejected. We all go through that sometimes in this world, don't we? Have you ever heard the phrase, God don't call the equipped, he equips the called? That's one of my favorite, favorite phrases. Because if it wasn't for God, I know I've shared this with you before, but he's telling me to share it again, especially for the people on TV. Uh, I wouldn't be able to be up here doing this if it wasn't for the grace of God. Uh, because before I came to Christ, I couldn't read or write. You know, to this day, I still can't write. I use this little tablet, and I speak into it, and it writes what I want so I can be up here and share with you. He's given me the ability to be able to read, to be able to share with you all. You won't find that phrase in the Bible, but it is scriptural. 1 Peter 2.9 says, We are chosen to declare his purpose. 2 Peter 1.3 explains that it is God's divine power that gives us everything we need for living a godly life. Philippians 2.13, Paul said that it is God who works in us to will and to act to fulfill his, his good purpose. So again, it, it's, it's him. It's all about Jesus Christ, not us. It's not what we can do. It's what he can do through us. The God who raised Jesus from the dead equips you with everything good, everything you need for accomplishing his will. He is the one who works within us what is pleasing to him. So what is our part? Allow him, believe him, listen to him, obey him, follow his instructions. He works within us by his Holy Spirit. He has the power. He raised Jesus from the dead. God really does choose who seem weak in this world. He doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. And we have been called according to his purpose. But we live in a culture that teaches us to hide our mess-ups 
and call them anything except for the sins that they are. Jesus, he will forgive us when we are willing to confess our sins to him. Jesus does not care about our past. He sees beyond our failures and offers us a fruitful future. You can't do anything so bad that it will cause God to love you any less. Jesus is so serious about the task that he left heaven to come to earth to restore anyone who is willing to be cleansed. Today, you can meet with Jesus, bring him your mess ups, and allow him to clean you up. Now, our theme last week, this week, is on prayer. So I'm going to open with the uh, Lord's Prayer today. I mean, uh, with the sinner's prayer today. I'm just going to do it a little different because I think, seeing we're on that subject, um, and there's so many people that watch on TV, if you're willing to give your life to Christ today, all you need to do is pray, pray this prayer after me. Um, because I think it's the single most important prayer you're ever going to pray. So this morning, that's what I want to do. So repeat after me. If anyone wants to rededicate your life, you can just repeat after me. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner, and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus died in my place, paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn from my sins and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I commit myself to you and I ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life to, to fill me and take control and to help me become the kind of person you want me to be Thank you, Father, for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Getting a lot of wisdom, amen. How many of us need some more wisdom in life? I sure do. I, I can never get enough of that, amen. In the best, the best, you know, I don't like worldly wisdom. I want God's wisdom, amen. I want the word of God. So I'll tell you what, we've been studying the book of Proverbs, open discussion. I think last week there were, what, maybe five of us or so. Uh, Sister Nally, I think there were five or so that were there, and, and, uh, and praise God. God is such an awesome God, and we want to really encourage you to come on on Wednesday night. Also, Thursday morning prayer is every Thursday morning at 7.30. Looking forward to that. And um, in the youth group at, uh, at uh, Friday night at 7 o'clock. And also, one week from today, does anybody know what's happening? The Gideons are coming. You're right. Somebody say, the Gideons are coming. <laughs> Who are the Gideons? If you ever get checked into a hotel room and uh, you open up the uh, little nightstand next to you in the drawer, there's a Bible there. And the Gideons have been the, uh, the organization that has planted that Bible there. So they go into hundreds and hundreds of hotels and they plant Bibles. Amen. Um, they have such awesome, awesome um, testimonies. They're going to be giving some testimonies next week. So I'd encourage you to come on out on this coming Sunday, a week from today. And uh, they're going to come up here and they're going to um, basically... Um, give testimonies of what they're doing, what their organization is all about, what God has called them to do in ministry. And if you could bring an extra love offering, that would be awesome because they're going to take up a separate love offering for their ministry. They're doing a great work in this world. They pass out little Bibles to a lot of campuses, um, college campuses, jails, prisons, all over the place. They give the word of God out. So, um, so we would definitely want to support that. Amen. And also there's a revival coming up January 19th through the 21st with revivalist Joe Tambora. So we're looking forward to that as well. And uh, we, um, we thank God for him. So he's coming up and let's uh, get the word out and invite many people to come to these events and to, uh, to be a blessing. Amen. Now, who does not have a prayer outline? Raise your hand. Sister Agnes is going to give you one. 
I've been, I've been teaching on this the last few weeks, and if you don't have a prayer outline, uh, I'd like to give you one. These, these are to take home, and we're going to go over these step by step in the Lord's Prayer. Somebody say, I want to pray more. Amen. You know, one time somebody was talking to me, and they said, Pastor Craig, I just don't have the time to pray. And my response was, you don't have the time not to pray. <laughs> Amen. How I many know oh, we all need to be people of prayer? Especially in these last days, amen? Let me switch over to my other microphone. We need to be praying. We need to be saying, Lord, have your way. Have your perfect way and will in my heart and life. Because, Lord, I want to have a closer and closer and closer relationship with you. Amen? How many know it's all about a relationship with God? Amen. amen. So that's the outline. And um, what we're doing on that outline is we're taking the Lord's Prayer and found in Matthew chapter 6, verses uh, 9 through 13. We're breaking down each section of this prayer, and we're going ahead and really, really um, focusing on it and what that prayer really, really means. Amen? Now, a couple of weeks ago, we had talked about a few things, and we're going to get into that in a minute to give you a very quick review. If you did not see part one and part two, my, um, my you know, advice to you would be to go to youtube.com, Type in Changing Lives Christian Church in those two dates as well, and those messages will come up so you can get caught up on what we're teaching uh, concerning the areas of prayer. So if you could open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 26 and verse 36 in the Word of God, and, um, and we can, let's stand to our feet in reverence to our Lord. Amen. Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 down to verse 40 is what I'll be getting, uh, uh, beginning with today. The Bible says, and I'm using the King James Version today, it says, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther. And fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Then he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for your word today. I pray, Lord God, that we would be people of prayer more than we've ever prayed in our entire Christian lives, Lord. I pray, Lord, as we know these are the last days. I pray, Lord God, that we would not be like the disciples were at that time. They had fallen asleep. Lord Jesus, you needed them more than ever at that particular time, and yet they kept on falling asleep, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we as a church would not be falling asleep spiritually. I pray in the name of Jesus that we would wake up and redeem the time. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, that we'd be reaching out to the lost, at any cost, and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. I pray, Lord God, that we would be commissioned, as you said in your word, for us to make disciples, Lord, to go out in this lost and dying world in every single way, shape, and form that we can in order to share your word with people. Lord, we all need you, Jesus. Every person, whether you're poor, whether you're rich, whether you have much or have little, whatever your status is in life, high positions, whatever it might be. It doesn't matter. What matters is that everybody needs Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. So, Father, I pray that your word would come through me this morning. Speak through me, Holy Spirit. This is your word, Lord God. And thank you, Lord God, for uh, me just being a simple instrument, Lord, or a vessel, Lord, to be used of you. Bless us, Lord, today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, my challenge has been the last couple of weeks to encourage everybody in the church to pray for at least one hour a day. Now, how many know one hour is only 60 minutes? And how many seconds is one hour, Brother John? 3,600 seconds in one hour. So you see that? He's a mathematician. He's right on it. Boy, what's the square root of 20? <laughs> Just kidding. Amen. But how many know? <laughs> so 3,600 seconds. Boy, that's not a lot of time. Right? I mean, we watch 60 minutes sometimes on TV, and it goes by real quick, right? We watch our programs on television, and it's an hour long, and it seems like it just flies by. But how many of you know when we start to pray, things are going to start happening in our lives? See, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about when Jesus approached the temple one time, and Matthew chapter 12 is where this is found, 21 rather, where this is found. And he saw some things that very much displeased him. 
He saw people selling some things, selling turtle doves and selling animals that were, that were meant for sacrifice, sacrifices and charging the people rip off prices like three times the amounts and so forth. Amen. And Jesus went ahead and cleared the money changes tables. He took them. He threw them over. He was very angry. He says, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Amen. Now, the temple, how many of you know that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit of God? And anything that goes inside of our temples and our bodies, how many of you know that we've got to give an account for that? So therefore, we have to say, Lord, my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. I do not want to feed on anything impure in my life. Amen? So first we talked about a couple of weeks ago that Jesus made that temple a house of purity. Now, as people of prayer, how many of you know we've got to have our houses, our temples, houses of purity? Amen? The Bible tells us, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 7, God has called us to be holy, not to live impure lives. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 goes on to say, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. So somebody say, my body is a living and holy sacrifice. Amen. The kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Sometimes we think about coming in church on Sunday morning, lifting our hands, singing full worship songs, and we feel like we're all set during the course of the week. Worship is also living a holy life unto the Lord during the week. Amen? Worship is saying, Lord, I will say no to the temptation and yes to you. Amen? Praise God. The Bible says we've got to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen? We found out that then Jesus said he wanted to make it a house of prayer. So he cleared the temple. He made it a house of purity, number one. Number two, he made it a house of prayer. And thirdly, it became a house of power. Now Jesus started healing individuals. Amen? You know something? If we as Christians would just go ahead and lay hands on people and pray for them, pray for the sick and for them to be healed in the name of Jesus, we have to be people that are pure in walking with the Lord in the way that he has created us to walk in him. Amen? The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's found in James chapter 5, verse 16. Amen? Where do we get our righteousness from? It's from the Lord, but it's also from obedience to God's word. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And finally, the temple became a house of perfected praise. Somebody say perfected praise. Amen. Praise God. So, so we see that four things happen here. We made it a house of purity, a house of prayer, a house of power, and a house of perfected praise. Now, we talked about last time that your desire to pray for an hour will turn into discipline, and your discipline will turn into delight. Isn't that right? Amen. You ever go on a diet and at first you don't like those salads and you don't like all that stuff, you know, but then you keep, keep on eating it over a course of weeks and next thing you know, you get used to it. So now, after a while, if you eat really good food and nutritious food for a whole bunch of time, like several months, if you go back to have, if you have a Big Mac attack <laughs> and you go to McDonald's and you take a bite out of, that, out of that Big Mac, it may not taste very good. Why? Because your taste has changed. Amen. In other words, it's, it's totally changed. So, so our prayer time, you know, our desire to pray for an hour will turn into discipline and your discipline will eventually turn into delight. Now let's go to the scripture that we're focusing on in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 through 13 in the word of God. And let's take a look at this prayer. We all probably know it by heart. We could probably just go ahead and recite it without even reading it. But the Bible says this in verse, uh, Matthew 6 and 9. Jesus says, after this manner, in, after this way, in other words, a likeness, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's focus on verse 9. The Bible says again, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The New Living Translation puts it this way, Pray like this, our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. Now, we, so last week we talked about we, the word hallow. To hallow God, hallowed be thy name. That's talking about to honor, to glorify, to worship God. 
We talked about that we come into God's presence with singing. So my suggestion is this. When you get in your prayer closet and you're ready to pray, start with a, start with a hymn. Maybe Amazing Grace or maybe uh, Blessed Be Thy Name or any song that God puts on your heart. You're entering into his presence. You're praising him. You're worshiping him. You're magnifying his mighty name before you even get into the prayer because you're hallowing his name. Amen. Praise God. How many you know God's name needs to be hallowed and needs to be worshiped? God needs to be praised and magnified. Amen. Praise be to God. God is your creator. He has made you. If you are a Christian, if you love God, you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. He is for you. He is not against you. God loves you unconditionally. God does not hate the sinner. He hates the sin because the sin separates you and I from him. And our God is a jealous God. He says he wants all of you, not just part of you. Amen. Praise God. You know, he wants all of you in his life. Amen. Praise God. He wants all of us. There are Old Testament Hebrew names of God compounded with the name Jehovah in the Old Testament. Now, we're not talking about Jehovah Witnesses. Amen. The word Jehovah is talking, it simply means the self-existent one. Somebody say self-existent one. Now, God has, been, <laughs> God has been around forever and ever and ever. There was no beginning, and there was, there's going to be no end. Amen? In fact, the Bible says that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Amen? Praise God. God has always existed. See, that's very hard for you and I to understand. All of us have birthdays. We're going to be singing happy birthday to any of you who had September birthdays. And Brother John brought a cake, and we're going to be having some cake after the, after the service with some coffee. We all have birth dates. My birthday was December the 31st in the year 1959. Now, that is how I measure my birthday. The last day of every year, I celebrate. I'm a year older. Praise God. That's my birthday. It associates with the day that I was actually uh, brought to this earth and I was alive out of my mother's womb. In actuality, um, the moment we were conceived is our real birthday, but when we're physically born, that's the day that is picked to be our birthday because we are a human being at the second of conception. Somebody say amen. Amen. So we have to know and understand biblically that, okay, that's where my time frame has started. But God, if he asks, Lord, what is your birthday? No, it's not December 25th, <laughs> like some people might say. Okay, that's when we celebrate Christmas, and that's fine. The day Jesus, you know, so, so, you know came to this earth, well, that's the date any, day anyway. We celebrate that. But how many know that God has always existed on and on and on? God does not keep a calendar. He doesn't have to keep time, amen, because he's infinity. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. God has been around a lot longer than you and I. God has been a lot, around a lot longer than Lucifer. God has been around a lot longer than Satan has been around, amen, because we have to know and understand that he is almighty, amen. He is Jehovah, the self-existent one. There are eight names compounded with the name Jehovah, and there's Jehovah Sitkenu, Jehovah Mekadesh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Rophe, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nissi, and Jehovah Rohi. Now, we're going to be explaining what are all these words mean, Pastor Craig. Amen? Now, how many of you know that each of these names is a revelation of the character and nature of God? You say, I want to know God better. I want to know about, so what you do is you look up what's called his attributes. For example, one of God's attributes is God is love. One of God's attributes is, uh, you know, how many know that he loves each, other, each one of us unconditionally, amen? So if you look at the different names of God, you're going to find out deeper and deeper who he truly really is. Each of these names is a revelation or the character or the nature of God. The benefits we enjoy in the new covenant deal with five vital areas. Number one, now because of the blood of Jesus, and this is great that we did communion today, because of that blood, how many know we have benefits in the new covenant? Somebody say, I have benefits. Yeah. Amen. You know, your workplace has benefits probably, right? But how many know these benefits are eternal that we're talking about today? Amen. Praise God. Number one, the forgiveness of sin. We're forgiven of sin and we're delivered from sin's dominion. Now, how many of you know that your daddy used to be Satan, but now that you receive Jesus Christ, your daddy is he Heavenly Father? Amen. 
So we have to know and understand, praise God. You know, my Father is in heaven, my heavenly Father. He is my Father, amen? Number two is spirit. That is the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Thirdly is soundness. That is the promise of health and healing. We saved that song today and we did it purposely. That's why I picked that out. I am the God that healeth thee. Amen. How many know our God heals us? He heals our body. He heals our spirit. He heals our soul. He heals our emotions and so forth. Amen. He is the one who heals us. Number four is success. That is freedom from the law's curse of failure in insufficiency. Amen. Five is security. Freedom from the fear of death in hell. You as a Christian don't have to fear hell. How many know because you are born again and when you leave this earth, you're going home to be with the Lord? Amen. Somebody say that's a good place not to go to hell. Amen. In fact, in a few weeks, I'll be preaching about hell. And I want to do that on purpose, not to make people feel bad, but I'll tell you what. We need to know about that place and what goes on there and what the Bible teaches about it. It's probably going to be two sermons. One's going to be, I got good news, that's when I'm going to preach about heaven. And I get bad news. That's when I'm going to preach about hell. Amen. Amen. There's one or two places that every single person is going to go to when they leave this earth. It's going to be heaven or it's going to be hell. Somebody says, well, I don't believe that. It really doesn't matter what you believe or don't believe. What really does matter is that's the truth. The Bible tells us that. Amen. There's no place in between called purgatory. Eh, well, we'll pray you up over a few masses or services, and then, you know, we'll get you up there. You know, you're on the fifth floor right now in that elevator. We'll get you up to the tenth. We'll just keep on praying. And we'll, you know, the Bible says don't pray for the dead. The Bible tells us, Jesus said, let the dead go bury their own dead. Amen? And that's not being disrespectful to people that have passed away. But church, we have to make a decision on this side of life for Jesus Christ. We've got to say, Lord, I receive you right now in my life as my personal Lord and Savior. I am going to guard my soul. I am going to go ahead and continue to grow my relationship with you. Amen? That is the most important decision we're ever going to make in our entire eternity to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. It's more important than who you're going to marry one day. It's more important than what career you're going to have, how much money you're going to make, what your retirement account's going to look like. It's more important than how many kids you might want to have or not have. You know, it's, it's the, the most important decision anybody is ever going to make. Isn't that correct? Amen? And we have to know and understand that. Amen? Praise God. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15 tells us these words. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, Jesus also became flesh and blood by being born in human form. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil, who had the power of death. Only in this way could he deliver those who have lived all their lives as slaves to the fear of of dying. Amen. How many know you don't have to fear dying? As a Christian, that is. Isn't that right? Amen. You know, how many know the rapture is probably going to happen any time? You know, somebody, somebody uh, predicted it's going to happen on September 23rd, and, you know, this big planet's going to smash into the earth, and whatever the case is. No man knows the day or the time. Maybe a guy like that's going to sell a lot of books and get rich real quick. But you know something? If anybody tells me the Lord's going to come back on November the 2nd of year 2018, I'll discount that as quick as those words come out of your mouth. Could he come back then? Absolutely. But I'll tell you what, he could come back today, any time at all. How I many know we've got to be ready every single day? If we're ready every day, we're going to go home to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I'll tell you what, I want to be found on my knees when he comes back. How about you? I want to be found praising him and worshiping him and magnifying his name when he comes back. Amen. Now, benefit number one we talked about, forgiveness of sin. Aren't you so happy that you're forgiven of your sin? Oh, praise God for that. Now, how many of you know we were born in iniquity? We were born in sin. Why? Because Adam is, if you want to trace your lineage back, it goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. They had sinned, amen. And then, and then their parents, so forth and so I mean, their, um, their children, so forth and so on, all the way down to the line where we are right now. But because of the blood of Jesus, because we received him as our Lord and Savior, he is our righteousness, amen. He is Jehovah Sit Genu. That, is, that means Jehovah our righteousness. Now, the book of Jeremiah, back in the Old Testament, chapter 23, verses 5 and 6, says this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, 
and Israel shall dwell, in, shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Those words are right in your Bible in Jeremiah 23. Amen. So how many of you know he is our righteousness? Amen. Praise God. He is our righteousness. Whenever God the Father looks down at me, amen, praise God, he sees the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. It's not because of my, you know something, as good as a person might be, or a title that you might have, whether it be pastor, evangelist, whatever, you, there's no way in this entire universe you were going to get to heaven on your own without Jesus. You can't be morally good and say, I'm going to get to heaven, I'm a good person, so therefore I'm all set. You yourself are making the rulings in order to get to heaven. How many of you know Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father except through me. So Jesus is the door. We, the only way we're getting heaven is through him. Amen? Praise God by knowing him personally as our personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Righteousness equals Jesus Christ plus nothing. We are complete in him. Amen? Somebody say, I'm complete in Jesus. When I think of the word complete, every time I buy that box of pre-made pancakes, I don't get the one from Aunt Jemima that, that has, it says, add eggs to it. I look over to the right and I see one from Aunt Jemima and it says, complete. Add water, and that's all you need to do. Hallelujah. I like complete. How about you? Amen. Amen. I don't want to have to get the eggs and all that stuff or whatever the case is. Amen. I want the thing complete. And how many of you and I are complete? Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. It's all because of Jesus. Amen. Now, Jehovah Mekadesh. That means the Lord who sanctifies. Somebody say sanctifies. Well, Pastor, what does sanctification mean? It means we are set apart. You see, there are too many Christians living in this world that they're not living according to the statutes of God's word. They're not living according to the principles that he gives according to his word. Jesus said, if you really love me, you're going to obey what the Bible says. Now, if you love God, you're going to want to obey what his word teaches. Amen? Praise God. How many you know God's way is the best way anyway? Amen, that's the truth. His way is the absolute best way. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 8 says these words. It says this, And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. In Leviticus 20 and verse 8, that's the King James, the New Living Translation puts it this way, Give all my laws, uh, keep all my laws rather, and obey them. For I am the Lord who makes you holy. How many know God makes us holy? Amen. God's Holy Spirit indwells believers and empowers them to live holy lives and to be spiritually moral and pure. When you think of the word grace, what, is the word, uh, what, is the, what are the thoughts that you have immediately? Some people say grace. Oh, praise God. Grace means I'm forgiven by God. Praise the Lord. Grace can mean a cover-up of sin or covers my sin. But yet, if you do a study in the Word of God, God's grace is the empowerment so we don't sin. It's not a, a situation where, well, I guess I sinned again. Oh, well, God, please have your grace cover me now. It's the empowerment so we, when we're tempted to, to look in that, at temptation, we can say, by God's grace, I have the empowerment not to sin. So we can walk away from it. Amen? So praise God. You know, does he forgive us? Yes, the Bible says if we confess to Jesus uh, our sins that he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, yes. But how many know we can't take God uh, for granted concerning sin? Shall we continue in sin, the Apostle Paul says, shall, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And the Bible says, God forbid. In other words, not to take advantage of God, amen, and sin, and then God, please forgive me, then sin, God, please forgive me, sin, please God, forgive me, you know, and so forth, amen? So Jehovah Shalom, let's talk about benefit number two, the Holy Spirit of God. Jehovah Shalom, that means the Lord is peace. Somebody say peace. You know, Jewish people, they walk into a room and they say shalom to people, that means peace. When they leave the room, they say shalom, that means peace as well, amen? So how many know shalom means God's peace? He is our peace, amen? Judges chapter 6 verse 24 says, Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Ophrah of the Abyssalites. In the New Living Translation, in that same uh, scripture says this, And Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and named it, The Lord is Peace. The altar remains in Ophrah 
in the land of the clan of Ebenezer to this day, or Abizer rather, to this day. Amen? So a couple of benefits concerning the covenant of the, uh, of the New Testament, the blood of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, amen? And again, the uh, next Hebrew word we're talking about here is Jehovah Shammah. That is, the Lord is there. The Lord is there. Shema means the Lord is there. How many know when you get home, the Lord is there? When you get in your car to leave church today, the Lord is there. You, can, you know, Dave, King David said, Lord, how can I escape from you? You're everywhere. Even if I end up in hell, you're there. Amen? How many know the Bible says that God is omnipresent? Another fancy word. That means he's everywhere at the same time. Amen? Isn't that good news? You know, Satan can only be at one place at one time. Amen? But the Lord is everywhere at the same time. Praise be to God. Hallelujah for that. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So the Holy Spirit's everywhere. Somebody say that is exciting. Amen. So, so the, again, benefit Shema means the Lord is there. Ezekiel chapter 48 verse 35 is where we find this uh, scripture. It says the distance around the entire city will be six miles. And from that day, the name of the city will be the Lord is there. That's where we get that Hebrew word uh, Shema from. Amen. Now, the overflowing, ever-present one, amen? God is the ever-flowing, overflowing, ever-present one in our lives. Now, benefit number three is exciting as well. That is soundness. How many know every Christian needs soundness? That's the truth, amen? And that means health and healing. And if you weren't here last Sunday, I had a terrible, terrible, uh, you know, uh, terrible, uh, sharp, sharp gas pains. And, and I'll tell you what, I was thinking, I don't even know if I can do the service today. I don't know if I'm going to be able to preach. I got up here at the altar before the service started. I said, Lord, I'm yours. You've got to take away that pain for at least a couple of hours because I won't even be able to hardly stand up. Miraculously, God got me through those couple of hours. And I'll tell you what, I didn't have one pain when I was up here preaching. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I mean, God is such an awesome God. That's all I can tell you. And I'll tell you what, I came here to church today. I was telling Brother Mike, I said, Brother Mike, I'll tell you what, I feel really good today. No more pain in my abdominal area. That's all gone. The Lord has healed me, and I thank the good Lord for that. Amen. So I'll tell you what, it really, really is grateful to say, Lord, I thank you so much for healing me, and I don't want to ever take my, um, my health for granted again. You know, how many, you know how, how many of us know people in the hospital even right now? There's some people that aren't even here today because they're visiting people that are in the hospital, amen? So we got to keep on praying, and I'll tell you what, as good as um, medical science is, and praise God for that, you know, we, we've got to say, Lord, I'm trusting in you for my healing, amen? Praise God. God is our healer. Praise, praise be to God. Now, I'm not telling you, if God, you know, I'll tell you what, you got something wrong with you, or whatever the case is, and, you know, go see the doctor, but at the same time, be praying about it. It could turn into a testimony that the Lord is my healer, amen? Praise God. Dr. Luke was a doctor, amen? The Gospel of Luke, he was a doctor as well. So praise be to God. Thank God for our doctors. Amen. Isn't that a good thing? Amen. Praise God. So soundness is health and healing. Jehovah Rophi, that is the Lord who heals. R-O-P-H-E, Rophi, the Lord who heals. Now, it means, the word Rophi means to restore, cure, or heal. Not only in the physical sense, but also in spiritual and in our moral sense. So the Lord is our heal. You know, we talk about healing. We just think about physical normally. But God will heal our spirit. God will heal our, our, our um, emotions. I mean, a lot of people need their emotions healed. A lot of people are going for counseling over and over. They need their emotions healed. Amen. They, they feel insecure, fearful, they feel anxiety. They feel all these negative feelings and so forth. But how many you know God can heal you? He can go right and heal you, amen. Praise be to God for that, amen. So, so that's what that's talking about, that word rophe, and it's found in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. The Bible says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Somebody say that's good news. Amen for that. Isaiah 53, verse 5, in the New Living Translation up there, says it this way, But he was wounded and crushed for our sins. He was beaten that we might have peace. He was whipped, and we are healed. Oh, praise God. And let's fast forward to the New Testament. Brother Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, he says this, He personally carried away our sins in his own body on the cross so we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. 
You have been healed by his wounds. Oh, glory to God for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for being my healer. Benefit number four is success. Somebody say success. Now, if you think about the word success, worldly success is totally different than godly success. Isn't that right? The world says you're successful if you make at least six digits a year. The world says you're successful if you have this fancy car. The world says you're successful if you have that big, huge house that almost looks like a mansion. So in the world's eyes, success is measured in materialistic things. But in God's eyes, how many know success is totally different than that? Amen? So success is what we're talking about, benefit number four. Freedom from the curse of the law. Amen? Freedom from the curse of the law. You know... As much as you want to obey, if you ever tried to obey all the Ten Commandments, if you wanted to obey all the law that's written in the Old Testament, it's going to be an impossibility. Amen? One person one time said, they came up and they said, I have never sinned in my entire life. I said, you just did. They said, what are you talking about? I said, you just lied. <laughs> Amen? I mean, you know, there's only one who never sinned, and that is Jesus. You see, that's what he came to this earth and he came with all the temptations you and I have. He came with all the, 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 the you know, all the stuff in this broken, lost world, but yet he never one time sinned. Not one time did he sin. He was the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He actually fulfilled the law. Amen. That's why he's the only one. We've got to rely on him for our salvation. No matter how good we can possibly try to be, it's not going to get us into heaven. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's only through him. Doesn't it make sense, church, to worship him and to praise him and magnify his name here on this side of life? Amen. One time one person said, oh, you know, sometimes people are too loud in praising God and, and I, I don't want to praise God and this, that, and the other and I know I'm saved, but why should I praise God like that? And I said, you might, you might as well get used to it now because when you get to heaven, there's going to be a lot of people just worshiping and praising him. Amen. So how many you know, praise God, you know, we got to, Jesus said the rocks are going to cry out if you don't praise and worship him. I mean, amen? So I'll tell you what, I don't want my rocks crying out. I want to be praising my Lord. I want to be worshiping him. When I'm awake at 3 o'clock in the morning, laying on my back, in my spirit, I just want to tell God I praise him and worship him and magnify his name. Amen? Praise God. You know, God is such an awesome God. It makes sense that we can praise and we come in church and praise him and worship and magnify his name. He's such an awesome God. Amen? You know, don't worry about what the world is doing or not doing. Just focus on your relationship with the Lord. Yes, pray for the situations going on, the calamity and the floods and all that. We need to be praying for those poor folks that have lost so much, their houses and loved ones. And yes, we need to be praying. But don't get moved and shaken and nervous and saying, oh Lord, I don't know. I mean, this is so, just so terrible, Lord God. How can I continue to serve you? Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, amen? If you continue to keep your eyes fixed on him, he will give you perfect peace. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, amen? So we continue to keep focused on him, amen? Continue to be praying to him. Continue to be worshiping him and to magnify his name. The next one is Jehovah Jireh. That is the Lord's provision shall be seen. How many know God is our provider? Somebody say, thank you, Lord. He is our provider, amen, praise God. You know, he's the provision for us. Genesis 22, verse 14 says, And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Amen. Abraham named that place, the, the place the Lord will provide. The New Living Translation says, This name has now become a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. As I think about Genesis 22, I think about the story behind that. First of all, God promises Abraham, I am going to make you a, a great nation of mine. And he says, Abraham's wife, Abraham and his wife, Sarah, they're getting up in age, they're getting up in age, they're senior citizens and so forth. And finally, you know, they're like, you know, Abe, I don't know if this is going to work out. His wife tells him, why don't you go ahead and, um, you know, sleep with my handmaid. And uh, when, when she gets pregnant, we'll bring up the baby as though it is our baby. Now, how many of you know you need not create Ishmael's in your life? What do I mean by that? Don't do things. When God promises you something, stand on his promise. Don't try to help him out. 
<laughs> He's well capable of doing it. Amen. So they did that, and of course there was a big mess and so forth, and then finally Isaac is born miraculously. After Isaac is finally born, and, and you know, he's about 12 years old, and God wakes up good old Abe one night and says, listen, I want you, it speaks to him and says, I want you to take your son and sacrifice him up on the mountain to me. Now think about the things going through Abraham's mind. Well, wait a minute, Lord, what do you mean? You told me, I mean, it took so long for this child to be born, and now I got to go and sacrifice him? You know, there's a principle we have to learn with that. We have to learn that we have to put God number one in all areas of our life, and he'll bless us with the rest of the stuff. He was obedient. He took his son, brought him up. He laid him down and, and tied him up with rope, his hands, his feet, and so forth. He had a knife ready to sacrifice him. And Genesis 22 says God stopped Abraham and says, Now I know your heart. Now I know that you love me even more than your only son. From that, there was a ram caught in the thickets, and that's where we get the word Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God who provides. So let me tell you this. If we put God first in all things, above everything, above our children, above our spouse, above our money, our jobs, everything in our lives, even above our own self, God will bless us. Amen. He'll provide. Amen? Because he is our provider. Praise God. So we have to know, amen, praise God that. And, and you know, he is there with us. He is our provider. Praise be to God. The benefit number five is security. How many know everybody needs security? There's three things that all of us need in life. We have to focus on our identity. How many know identity is in Christ Jesus, according to the Word? Many people don't know their identity, but how many know if we study the Word of God, God tells us who we are in Christ? Amen? Security is another one. Many people are insecure, but how many know we need security? We need to feel safe. We have Jesus with us, amen, so we can feel that security, that safeness in our life. Amen. We have to know and understand, amen, praise God, say, Lord, I want to be significant. Yes, you are significant in Christ Jesus because God loves you unconditionally. Amen? So we have to know, amen, praise God, security is benefit number five, and this is freedom from the fear of death in hell. Amen. Jehovah Nissi is the Lord my banner. Somebody say banner. Amen. Exodus chapter 17, verse 15, the Bible says, And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi. Amen. In Exodus 17, in verse 15, in New Living Translation says, Moses built an altar there and called it the Lord is my banner. What is a banner, Pastor Craig? It's a banner. It's a pole, an ensign, or a standard. Amen. It means victory. How many know, church, we can confess there's going to be victory in my life today? Amen. Victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? We have victory in him. Praise be to God. The Lord is my banner. He is my victory. Praise be to God. The other one under that benefit number five on your outline is security. It means Jehovah Rohi, R-O-H-I, and that means the Lord my shepherd. Somebody say shepherd. Now, how many know a shepherd is one who feeds the sheep? A shepherd is somebody who protects the sheep. God is our shepherd. He's our protector. The Bible says Jesus is our chief shepherd. Pastors are only under shepherds, but how many know Jesus is the main event? He's the chief shepherd. Amen. Praise God. So we can say, Lord, I know sometimes you discipline me. Sometimes I get out in left field and so forth. And whatever the case is, you want to keep me in the fold. You don't want me to stray away, Lord God. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to walk in obedience with you. Amen. He feeds us, amen. How many of you know we've got to be feeding upon his word? The word of God is so powerful, amen. Praise God. You ever hear that expression, you are what you eat? Well, if you keep on feeding on the word of God every single day, that's what you're going to become, amen. Good word going in, good word coming out of your mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we have to know and understand, amen, that we've got to feed on the word of God every single day. Praise God. So again, there will be victory in our life today. And again, security, Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd. It means to feed or lead to pasture as a shepherd does his flock. It can also be translated companion or friend. How many know the Bible says that he's also our friend? Imagine that. Jesus wants to be your very best friend. Wow, Lord. You're, you're, you're the Lord of lords. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're the Alpha. You're the Omega. Amen. Praise God. You're the Lion of Judah. You're, you're all these things, Lord God, and you actually want to be my friend? Wow, that's awesome. Amen. How many know he's an awesome God? Amen. 
Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6 says these words, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all I, that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. Is God leading you today beside a peaceful stream? Amen. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will, pers will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen? You know, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, notice it doesn't say, though we're stuck in the middle of the valley of the shadow of death. You're going through a tough time in your life, a, a very difficult situation, you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. You will get out of it because Jesus is right there with you. Amen? We're not stuck in it because we're walking through it. Amen? Praise be to God. You know, God is such an awesome God. We've got to say, Lord, have your perfect way and will in my heart and in my life, Lord God. One person one time said, who's following you around? And his answer was, goodness and mercy. <laughs> goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Amen? How many know goodness and mercy are always following us? Praise be to God. We confess that. What's following me? Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy is following me. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. God has blessed me. Praise be to God. Amen. How many know the Lord gives us spiritual nourishment, spiritual restoration, guidance in the right way, and he gives us protection. Amen. Our God gives us everything. Now, looking at, uh, looking at your outline once again, in the, in the uh, particular outline as we go through this, amen? Uh, we look at it, we say, okay, Lord, I want to go ahead, first of all, and start with a song. I want to start singing and praising and worshiping you. I want to come into your presence, Lord God. Then after that, we, we maybe look and say, Lord, is there any sin in my life that I need to confess to you and to repent from? I want you to hear my prayers, Lord God. I want to come before you with a clean heart in the name of Jesus. Then we say, our Father. How many know the, the only way we can call him Father is by virtue of the blood of Christ? Amen. Because Jesus died on the cross. We've accepted Jesus Christ in our heart as our Lord and our Savior. And because of that, we can call God our Father, which art in heaven. Amen. Hallowed be thy name. We can picture Calvary and thank God. You can call him Father by virtue of the blood of Jesus, like I just said. Hallow the names of God corresponding with the five benefits in the new covenant and make your faith declarations. So we've talked about forgiveness of sin today. Again, Jehovah Sitkenu, Jehovah Mekadesh, meaning my Lord, you are my righteousness. Lord, you are my, the one who sanctifies me. Amen? He's my sanctifier. Lord God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. You're my Jehovah Shalom. Lord, you are my peace. Lord, you're my Jehovah Shammah. You are there with me all the time. Amen? Even when it seems like God isn't with us, how many of you know he is still there? He doesn't check in and check out. It's us that doesn't feel his presence. We think he's not there, but the reality is he is there. It's our feelings because of our emotions and our anxieties and our fears and insecurities that make us think, oh, Lord, where did you go? And he said, I'm right here. Amen? So how many know the Bible says that Jesus will never leave nor forsake us? Amen? Praise God. He's a Jehovah Rophi, the soundness, and that'll benefit the soundness we talked about today in detail. The Lord who heals me. What about success? Lord, you are my success. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord's provision shall be seen. In security, Lord, you are my security. You're my Jehovah Nissi, the Lord my banner. There'll be victory in my life today. You're my Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd. Amen? Praise be to God. So that's just the first part of this prayer. Do you see, church, how much is in this? We haven't even gotten, to, we haven't even gotten halfway done yet. Amen? You know, God is such an awesome God. And next week we're going to be talking about thy, Lord willing, well, two weeks, because Gideon's are coming next week, two weeks from today, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're going to break that down. But if you notice on your outlines, you can pray like for yourself under that. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Pray for yourself. Pray, pray Lord God, I'm praying for myself in this area, this area, I'm going through this issue, whatever the case is. 
You can pray for your family, pray for your mate, your children, your extended family members. Are there any family members that are unsaved? Pray for their salvation. By the time you start praying this with this outline, one hour probably won't even be enough time. Amen? You probably want to even go extend it and go over on that because it all depends who you need to pray for. It is amazing to me, church, in closing, that this morning just so many things seem to be happening in the world today. Uh, people are dying. Uh, people are getting shot. Uh, people are just... All kinds of things are happening. But you know, church, we need to know that these are the last days. We need to keep on praying for folks and pray that God would be with them and try to help them and minister. But at the same time, church, we really need to have a closer and closer relationship with God. I just want to encourage you. Amen? I'll tell you what, we want to see everybody in this room and those of you watching by television in heaven one day. Amen. Amen. And that's what we're here for, to give some good news. How many of you know good news is not bad news? Good news, Jesus saves. Amen. Good news, when you die, you could be with the Lord for an eternity. Good news, when in that place there's no funerals, in that place there's no death, in that place there's no sickness, no disease, no hospitals, no nonsense, no relational problems, no stuff going on. How many know it's the way that God intended us to live to start with? Amen. All the loss, all the hurts, the heartaches that we live in this earth, but how many know God never intended that? He just wants obedience from you and me. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet and close in a word of prayer. Then we'll sing happy birthday. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we praise your mighty name for this day. This is truly the day in which you have made. Your word tells us to rejoice and be glad in it. So therefore, we do rejoice and we are glad in it. We thank you for such a beautiful day today, Lord God, even outside as well as inside your house here, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to come to church today to praise and to worship you and to magnify your name. I pray, Lord God, Holy Spirit, that you would put a thirst and a hunger upon every single one of us to want to be people of prayer to really really get into prayer Lord God to lift up and intercede for people Lord God going through situations Lord to pray for our loved ones Lord I lift up and pray for our unsaved loved ones to receive Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior we pray Lord for the political arena Lord God and our, our judges in our, our state and legislatures and so forth Lord we pray Lord that if they don't know you Jesus that they would also receive you as Lord and Savior, that they make good decisions in our nation and upon this land, Father God. We pray for the different areas, Lord, that have got flooded and, and the earthquakes going on, Lord God, and the hurricanes and the tremendous storms and electricity being lost. We pray, Lord God, that you'd be with those folks, Lord God, that you would be with them, Father, restore what they have lost. But most importantly, through all this, I pray that people would know that, Lord, that to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, to put their faith in Him, to put their trust in You, Lord God, and Lord, for You to have Your way and will in their hearts and lives. Lord, we thank You for that, and we praise You. I pray for those who are not in church today. We pray, Lord God, that they would be encouraged, that, Lord, we'd see them next week when the Gideons come, Lord God, to visit us. I pray, Lord God, that we'd come expecting. And, Lord, we thank You for that, Father, and we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.